fires force thousands of Front Range residents out of their homes. Down at the bottom of the canyon, there's 40 foot yeah. high flames. flames. For some, those evacuation orders came just in time. We had about 20 minutes and, you know, it was one of those moments that we thought we would just be returning. Dozens more homes are damaged or destroyed across Boulder and Larimer counties. We can't go back to our house, our property. It's just basically, basically smoldering. And the weather won't help much today as we see warm, dry and breezy conditions return to the fire zones. Thank you for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jessica Porter. At least eight major fires are actively burning across the northern half of Colorado right now. Three of those fires have caused Front Range residents to evacuate. The Cameron Peak fire continues to rapidly grow towards Fort Collins and Loveland. And over the weekend, two new fires in Boulder County have forced thousands out of their homes. Number seven is bringing you live team coverage of the fire danger. Meteorologist Lisa Hildago is tracking conditions for firefighters and the smoke and air quality issues the fires are creating for all of us here in the metro. And Nicole Brady is live in Boulder County where two fires are burning right now, both triggering evacuation orders. Nicole, the Calwood fire has already destroyed dozens of homes. Jessica, 26 homes uh, that we know of so far, but there could be more and they'll, they'll know that. They won't know that till they get in and see some of the areas that were damaged. But those homes and some of the other ones that were evacuated are just behind this roadblock here. This leads up to these neighborhoods that are closed to their residents right now. We've seen people coming out here all morning trying to get past to their homes, uh, but they're really trying to keep this road clear just for the firefighters. Now we were able to fly Air Tracker 7 this morning before we were grounded due to wind, and this is giving us the first look we've had at the devastation from above, and you can really get a sense here of, of how big this area is and what's been lost. Many of the homes burned are in the Foothills Ranch and Mountain Ridge subdivisions. You can see in this video driveways that now lead up to just nothing but char remains and then you can see some of these homes that were spared the fortunate few standing in contrast to those neighbors who have lost everything we told the kids it was a, a fire drill and to go and run inside and get their stuff and um, to try and grab photos just in case it was one of those moments that we thought we would just be returning and that's not what happened now, the Walsh family, just one of the 26 homeowners who are finding out they've lost their homes. I spoke to the new incident command on the fire in the last hour, and not much acreage has changed for either of the fires, the Calwood or the Left Hand Canyon. Uh, they are hoping to get more airdrops on the Calwood fire today that they were unable to do yesterday because of the weather, and crews will be focusing on strengthening the containment lines between the fire and other structures today. But they do expect fire activity to pick up this afternoon with those changing wind weather conditions that you mentioned, Jessica. So uh, that is going to be a concern for firefighters later on. That's why, of course, they are still trying to keep these areas blocked off and why those evacuations remain in place for some 1,600 homes and 3,000 people here in Boulder County. We're live this morning. Nicole Brady, number seven. Just devastating for those families. Thank you, Nicole. The Cameron Peak fire that began in Poudre Canyon back in August is making history again as the only wildfire in state history to top 200,000 acres. Strong winds caused it to run east towards Loveland, triggering a flurry of evacuation orders as it grew. That video is just unbelievable. It gives you an idea of just the kinds of conditions firefighters have to, be, to brave. The Larimer County Sheriff says more homes were likely lost in the latest area of growth on the southern edge, nearing Glen Haven, Drake, and Masonville. But the fire activity is still too dangerous to get an exact count of the damage. In total, the fire has burned more than 203,000 acres and is 62% contained. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo is standing by for team coverage. Lisa, the winds won't be as bad as we saw last week, but they're still pretty strong. Air Tracker 7, as Nicole mentioned, was flying above Boulder this morning and had to land because of those high winds. Now, how will that affect firefighters and what will all of this mean for our air quality today? 
again, not ideal conditions. You'd love to see some calm conditions and obviously some rain. It's going to be way too dry again for the next few days. And current wind speeds have been up and through both Boulder and Larimer counties at about 15 to near 30 miles per hour. So it's breezy. And again, those winds coming in out of the west southwest. So we're going to continue to see some of that smoke filtering in and, and pushing east over the I-25 corridor. So still air quality advisories in the counties. They're shaded in gray. It covers the entire northern metro area up into Fort Collins and Greeley and obviously in through the foothills there. So hazy conditions again, more areas of smoke this afternoon and temperatures that are just really very warm for this time of year. We're likely going to see highs in the low to mid 70s, then cooling back down into the 60s between about six and seven. Obviously makes for some really pretty fall weather, but not great for firefighters. We're going to take a closer look at how those winds will likely pick back up even more so by midweek, plus the next cold front that's going to hit. It could bring some showers. Let's hope for it. Details here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Lisa. Now to another grim milestone in the global coronavirus pandemic. The number of COVID-19 cases worldwide surpassed the 40 million mark today, according to Johns Hopkins University. In the U.S., only two states are seeing a significant drop in case rates. That's Missouri and Vermont. But most states are struggling to contain the spread. In Wisconsin, the positivity rate hit nearly 25 percent. And in New Mexico, hospitalizations have more than doubled since the beginning of October. Now let's get this straight to the numbers here in Colorado. Sunday saw our first drop below 1,000 new cases a day since early last week, confirming 933 new cases. But our positivity rate is still too high, coming in above the 5% threshold set by the World Health Organization. And that goes for our single day rate as well as our seven day average. Hospitalizations are still rising too, with 445 beds in use by coronavirus patients. But at this point, only 5% of our hospital capacity is in use. Honoring a fallen Commerce City police officer today, Detective Kurt Holland and a civilian died in a head-on crash Friday evening after investigators say a third driver swerved into oncoming traffic. And right now, the Commerce City Police Department is holding a news conference to recognize the service of Detective Holland and also paying respects to the other driver killed, Francesca Dominguez. Formal charges have officially been filed against a security guard, Matthew Doloff. Doloff, as you remember, will face second degree murder in the shooting of protester Lee Keltner. Number 7's Micah Smith has the latest on the investigation into the deadly incident. This story began two weekends ago during a conservative political group's Patriot Muster rally that was met with counter protesters from the Black Lives Matter movement. According to an affidavit, 49 year old Lee Keltner, who was protesting on the Patriot Muster side, got into an argument with 30 year old Matthew Robert Doloff and a nine news producer who Doloff was guarding. Keltner slapped Doloff on the side of the head, and that's when Doloff drew his gun from his waistband. Doloff shot Keltner as Keltner began to use pepper spray. Keltner was later pronounced dead at Denver Health Medical Center. Doloff was hired as a private security guard for Nine News through a security company called Pinkerton. Pinkerton says Doloff was a contractor, not a full-time employee. Nine News says they requested unarmed security guards through Pinkerton. Pinkerton is a company that Denver 7 has used on occasion, with the company supplying Doloff as a contractor as well. However, Doloff was not licensed to act as a security guard or carry a gun on the job within the city of Denver. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Okay, thank you. Voters will have the option of casting their votes in person starting today. Many counties will start opening voting centers in phases, so check with your local election divisions on where you can vote today. Today is also the deadline to open all 383 election drop boxes across the state. And as those ballots come in, election officials can start tabulating the votes for races. Close to half a million Colorado ballots have already been mailed in or dropped off. With just 15 days until Election Day, President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden targeting key battleground states. A record 28 million Americans have already cast their ballots as more states open up early voting. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Washington with the latest. I am looking very forward to the debate. Thank you, everybody. President Trump may be looking forward to the first presidential debate tomorrow, but today it's his tax records that are taking center stage. This bombshell investigation from The New York Times saying it obtained more than two decades of the president's tax information. Data Trump has repeatedly refused to release, citing an IRS audit. ABC hasn't seen any of the documents the Times has obtained, but the information allegedly paints a picture of a president deep in debt with a series of financial losses. 
According to the Times, President Trump paid no federal income taxes in 10 of the past 15 years, and in 2016 and 2017, paid only $750 to the IRS. He reportedly had write-offs for residences, aircraft, and even a $70,000 tax deduction for hairstyling costs during his time on The Apprentice. The Times also says most of his core businesses, including his golf courses and hotel just blocks from the White House, report losing millions, putting the president's personal debt at $421 million, money coming due in just a few years as he currently runs for re-election. President Trump's response to the Times reporting evolving yesterday. Uh, totally fake news. No, actually I paid tax. But today, seeming to tweet an explanation as to why he paid so little in taxes. I paid many millions of dollars in taxes, but was entitled, like everyone else, to depreciation and tax credits. The Biden campaign already launching attack ads over the Times report, highlighting the thousands ordinary Americans pay in federal income taxes. He doesn't know how to debate the facts, but he's not that smart. And all of this tees up the debate tomorrow here in Cleveland. Ohio is a crucial state, often seen as the predictor of who will win the White House. Alex Perche, ABC News, Cleveland, Ohio. Don't forget, Denver 7 has an election guide with everything you need to know about voting in Colorado this year. We'll help you every step of the way, from registering to vote to tracking your ballot. Just click on the Election 2020 tab on the DenverChannel.com.